Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Stitching Tales. I am Johanna Lundström. And I am Malena Jerpe. And today we thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a catch up to take you along the journey of what it's like to running a sewing business. Some of the interesting things that are happening, some challenges, and of course we also have a lot of nice updates. So Malena, what has been going on in your business lately? Uh, well, for the last couple of weeks, it uh, actually happened. Uh, I mean, quite a few things have happened. I mean, we released this podcast, which is uh, amazing. I'm really happy about that. And uh, I also finally am done with uh, Malvati. So I launched that um, uh, a few days ago now. And uh, and since uh, you have to sus- subscribe to my newsletters uh, to get it for free, Uh, I also got a newsletter, which uh, you helped me with. Thank you so much. (laughs) And, uh, well, as uh, if you listened to the previous uh, podcast episode, uh, we talked about newsletters and I was kind of hoping to, you know, avoid having a website, uh, but it didn't sound like that. So now I have a website as well. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, quite a lot of things have happened uh, lately. So I'm, I'm really happy about that, that things are moving along, you know. That's really fun to hear. And I have so many questions about what you're saying. First of all, uh, what is the URL or the address to your new website? It is uh, hazelhenpatterns.com. So it's very, very straightforward. Yeah. And so I'm really curious because this is your first time you tried using uh, a free pattern, right? And it's basically a way to get people to sign on your email list, but also, of course, to learn and get an introduction to you as a pattern maker and to your brand. So how many days ago that were we recording this? Was it that you released the uh, pattern? Uh, it was on Wednesday and today is Friday. So yeah, two two days ago. Okay. So it's really how- newly released. So how did you market the pattern? It was only on uh, on my own uh, Instagram. I made uh, like two posts uh, so far. So it's really um, n- now I'm going to, of course, work with it uh, more and uh, post more uh, um, and talk about it uh, uh, more on, on Instagram. But it's only in my own channels. I've been been talking about it. Because hmm. so also, if you're curious about the Malva tea, we're going to make sure if you listen to this episode or watch it on YouTube, we will, of course, include a link to Maliana's website and how you can get access to the Malva tea. So have you got any kind of feedback from people and how has been the reception been? What is your feeling like two days after trying this new like format for you? Yeah, I mean, I've got uh, several subscribers to the newsletter, which is really, really fun. Um, and uh, I mean, of course, I don't think Maybe not so many people have sewn it yet, uh, but I had, of course, a test group uh, and I got really good response uh, from the testers. And uh, I mean, several of the testers actually made several samples as well, like uh, a few of them even made three, four samples. And I think that's like really, I'm really happy about that because then it means that you you really liked it and uh, you want to make more of it. Um, so that is, uh, I'm really happy about that. Um, so I'm looking forward now to see on uh, Instagram as well, like if you are using the hashtag Malva T um, to see other people's make, because I think that's like the most fun thing if you see someone uh, wearing your uh, like the pattern you made. That uh, it's really it's so much fun to see it. Yeah, it's the ultimate validating feeling because you always work in a in a vacuum when you're developing something, creating something. So it's it only take it takes it only like feels real when other people are using or, or doing creating what you have created because that's that's like the ultimate goal because it doesn't really mean as much if you it's hard to uh, in Sweden we have a saying that you're writing for your desk drawer, which means that some people only write their dream novel and then they just put it in the desk drawer Uh, to me that sounds crazy I would never ever do that (laughs) because I I honestly think that most of us uh, do thrive on getting validation and feedback and people saying that they enjoy the stuff and sharing it to others So, so to me the concept of you know, creating a sewing pattern just for fun and then put it in the drawer, it makes very little sense to me. <laughs> so yeah, because no, you don't even get the validation. Like, 
<laughs> Absolutely. And even though like this is a free pattern, I still have put a lot of work and effort and everything into it because I want it to be really good. Uh, because this is, of course, if there are new customers and they don't know my brand or anything and they want to try it out, I want to give like a, a great first impression, of course. Uh, and especially if people are, are going to like buy fabric and make invest time and sewing, like I want it to be really, really good. And if you put a lot of work and effort into it and then you do nothing with it, like, no, of course, I want like as many people as possible to like also enjoy it and uh, and use it. So that's uh, now it's been really it's so nice to finally launch something. I think it was like two and a half three years ago since I like launched my last pattern uh, so it's been it's been a while a while now I mean I've only focused on on the, the book that we wrote together fit for knits and I said like during that time I'm not allowed to make any more patterns because uh, otherwise it's just gonna I mean take longer time to finish the book so it's like okay finish the book then you can move on to make your next pattern so, uh, so yeah, I'm happy to be back, uh, back into the pattern making uh, part again. Yeah, that's so fun to hear. And and also, uh, should, perhaps you could talk a little bit about the Malva tea. What type of because uh, teas there there are lots of teas. So, what is uh, the Malva teas kind of angle or the design features? Yeah, and uh, I'm really passionate about t-shirts. I don't know what it is, but I'm like <laughs> that's my that's my thing. I mean, it's not the most complicated garment. Like it's not. Com- compared to a suit or trouser or whatever, but like how many perfect t-shirts do you got in your wardrobe? So it's like, even though it's a simple, just a t-shirt, like it's still really tricky to get everything right. So for this uh, Malva I really wanted to, f- to focus on like getting a really, really good, basic everyday t-shirt. Um, so it's quite like a snug fit uh, at the top, at the shoulder and chest. It has a minus uh, uh, like negative ease over the chest. Um, but then since it is quite uh, tight on the shoulder, I want the, the sleeve to be not bigger, but that not super, super tight. Um, and then, uh, so it's like the perfect t-shirt to have like under your cardigan or something because uh, it doesn't, like if you have a really oversized t-shirt and then you put on a, a regular sized cardigan, it's going to be that, you know, bulk under, under the armhole, extra fabric is going to be really uncomfortable. Um, so that I really focused on that it should of course look good on its own but you should also be like really comfortable if you have a cardigan or sweater on top of it and then at the bottom it's uh, more relaxed over the hip it has uh, plus um, uh, um, like I say plus ease movement Mm -hmm. yeah so it's not like a super tight or anything so it's really uh, comfortable to wear like it's uh, not you can have a lunch, you can sit down, you can, it's like not that super tight, so it's still like comfortable uh, when you wear it. So uh, so a lot of uh, focus have like, I've focused a lot of getting the right silhouette on it. Um, so I'm really, really happy about it. And I'm actually wearing one right now, uh, a sample <laughs> underneath this uh, sweater. So it's, uh, it's a good, I, I really like it. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I agree. It's a beautiful, beautiful shape as well, because as you said, it's, it's quite it's quite shaped and narrow around the shoulders and then it kind of gradually like uh, shapes out, which to me is one of my favorite silhouettes because it, it really I really like I personally don't, I'm not super fond of oversized because I'm quite short as well. So I sometimes feel like if if the shoulders and everything is too wide, I kind of feel like I drown it. But what I really like about the Malva as you say, it has really beautiful shaping. So it, it flows with the body beautifully and also because it's so nice sometimes you know when everything is very tight it can make you a little bit uncomfortable even though you are wearing a stretchy knit fabric so as you say it's really nice because it has that nice flow and and, and like uh, the exact right amount of ease around the like the tummy and the hip area so i think it's it's really as it probably it's definitely one of those wardrobe staples t-shirt pattern i think that you if you if you you know, if you sew one, you will probably end up sewing a lot more because sometimes we all do need, you know, those like basics knit tops because they are also ha- quite hard to find ready to wear. There's usually something a little bit off with the fit as well. And it's funny that there are so many t-shirts, but still so hard <laughs> to I find. I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was on a, many years ago, I was on a lecture and 
the um, the one who was speaking was like, yeah, but how many like n- t-shirts do you need? We were talking about designing, and uh, and I was like, well, how many perfect t-shirts do you got? Well, I don't have like the perfect tee, so obviously we are not there yet. So so yeah, of course we need more t-shirts as well. And also, it really depends on what kind of fabric you use, if you like or not. Um, and for this one, I've uh, it's both uh, suitable for like uh, cotton elastan mix um, or um, or cotton with uh, if it has like a minimum forty percent stretch horizontally, but also it's uh, suitable f- to, for those more um, drapey fabric like uh, viscose, rayon, modal, or layer So it's uh, a little bit more those softer, softer, nice uh, fabric with uh, with a little more heavier drape. So uh, so yeah no you I think like you can't have too many t-shirts right or no, is that just me <laughs> cuz no I was actually thinking about that cuz I did my washing last uh, night uh and I you know folded in the um, the washed uh, clothes this morning and I was thinking I, f- I need to update my I have too too few t-shirts <laughs> because sometimes uh when you have this favorite t-shirt and sometimes especially in some knit fabrics do have a tend to get a little bit worn out with years so even though you know the this fabric still holds up it tends to get a little bit you know the color might get fade or you get slightly like um pilling it's like a slight si- science of wear especially if you love those soft uh, soft uh, natural fibers the way i do so i was really thinking about this the, the just this morning that i definitely need to <laughs> to, get, to make sure that i have more t-shirts because yeah it's it's so nice and because also they are fairly simple to sew and also because you have the opportunity to do any type of fabric basically you can use a, a solid color or a print or i love stripes for instance so it's such a such a nice way of just repurposing you know one pattern over and over and over so once you if you know it fits and you nail everything then it's such a nice way to just churning out you know every every t-shirt will be unique even though it's it's the same pattern which is one of the things that i really really enjoy about sewing those basics yeah absolutely and when you have a pattern that you really like i mean it's so easy to also make it your own like make it a little bit longer or shorter or changing up the neckline if you want to so it's really easy to hack then uh, if you know that uh, the fit is is uh, is right but um that's a lot about me how about you johanna what have you been up to lately Yeah, because in the last catch up, I mentioned that I was working on a trouser sewing tutorials and uh, based on basically I made a pair of dressier trousers uh, this earlier this year. And because I, I I should say that I, I am very much like a, a teacher more perhaps than a pattern developer. And so a lot of the stuff I do is basically just learning using different platforms to teach people how to sew, especially those things that are I would say I don't cater much towards beginner. I would definitely say that my content is more towards the intermediate, not like super advanced, but a few more advanced techniques as well. So, and I've been really uh, like very interested in um, making pants like the best techniques because I do find, as I think I mentioned previously also, that some some um, pattern instructions are a little bit confusing, especially for certain parts. Uh, the ones that I find tricky is mostly inserting the zipper and also sewing a uh, waistband especially curved ones because they are quite tricky because they stretch out and it's very hard to get nice on the inside so when i was sewing these uh, pants i was like okay i'm gonna create a tutorial series so i'm gonna just try and rip and try and rip until i find the best methods that i can totally like stand for <laughs> and that are you know proven so it's not something that i just pull out of my thin air because i think that's also very important that when you're teaching something it has to be something you can really say okay i've tried this several times and i can definitely vouch that this method is really really good because so that's been like my my passion project and it sounds like oh just do a do a tutorial but if you check out my tutorials <laughs> on thelostitch.com you can go over there and of course we're going to link to that tutorial series as well uh it's so much work because it just isn't like taking a couple of photos during sewing it's also doing illustrations for certain steps so i've been doing a lot of, like technical illustrations so it's basically and also for the um zipper uh tutorial i also have a free uh download pattern pieces so if you 
if the your trouser pattern doesn't have the like the correct pattern pieces because I do find that some home sewing patterns they have pieces that are very difficult to understand and sew. So I have created like um, a pack for the fly sheath and for the extensions. So it's going to be really easy if you use these pattern pieces. You will much have a much easier time to be successful. Uh, so yeah, that has, and also it's good because now we're doing the pod and we talk about stuff. You want to make sure that <laughs> people are actually going to like, uh, they might wonder, okay, when it's done. So I definitely had like a bit of a fire burning there this weekend. So I was finishing that. Uh, so that's been really, really fun. And I also sent out the newsletter speaking about that and I got really high open rate and I've gotten great, great feedback from, from the tutorials. And I want to say. It's a, it's a little bit of a dilemma because, uh, and I, I would love to talk about this because obviously I would say that my sewing niche are two things I would say. First of all, it's sewing with knits and secondly, it's sewing jeans. I don't really have any products or patterns that are about sewing trousers in woven fabric apart from jeans, but, but not other type of trousers. Uh, so. But for me, because uh, I also have to create from a place of passion and interest, uh, sometimes it's nice for me to do something that isn't 100% like the smartest thing to do from a business perspective, but because it's a personal interest of mine that I want to share, I sometimes deviate from my like focus business. And some people will probably say, okay, that's a bad idea. But for me, it's a way of like um, keeping my energy going and actually do something that I enjoy, even though it doesn't like make me money in a direct way. No, I totally understand that you have to have those passion projects, even though it doesn't financially maybe make sense. But it's like, I got to do this because I think it's fun and I need that fun to be able to continue doing the other things. So no, I totally understand that. But so. Are you thinking about maybe making some <laughs> pattern for trousers then or? Yes, I would love to do that. And I'm, I'm actually doing a pair of trousers. My next sewing pattern is going to be a pair of trousers, but I don't think it's going to have zippers, but it's, you can add them if you want. So I'm actually working with the help of Maliana on my next sewing pattern, which is a, a sewing pattern made um, trouser pattern with knit fabrics. So, but it's going to have some of those like dresser details, such as like front pockets and also darts so it's going to look quite dressy even though it's super comfortable because i do like focus a lot on knits when it comes to my sewing patterns every sewing pattern so far i've done is, is in knits but yeah uh so that's but also i think uh when it comes to the the trouser like woven fabric thing for me it's also a way of building connection and building trust because if people uh, find my content and they they feel like, wow, this is finally someone who has explained something that makes sense. And that's one of my a very common feedback that I get that I've been looking so much to figure out why, how do you do this? How do you do that? And this is the first tutorial that actually made sense to me. So for me, even though perhaps trousers isn't my speciality or my niche, it makes sense because it helps people to understand my teaching style and it builds like, um, an interest and a kind of relationship. So that's also, I think for me, why, why it makes sense to do this, even though it makes me no money and it took me several days. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to disagree with you there. Not your niche. You wrote a book about sewing jeans. Yes. Like, come on, <laughs> you got that. Like, that's what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, how, how does it become your niche if just one book about it? I don't know. You, you do bring up a great point because that, that, that's a good thing, you know, when we're chatting like this, because sometimes when you're in your own head, it, it, it makes so much sense, right? The way you're, you're thinking and then someone else calls you out like you did now. You're like, okay, I mean, <laughs> you, you do yeah, have and a point. I, uh, Like, to be honest, like <laughs> when you talk about it like that, to me, it will make perfect business sense now to actually make a really like a dressier pattern for jeans as well. Uh, mm. Because I mean, for, for me, I, I'm not I'm not a writer. I'm not a journalist. So for me, making the sewing instructions like that's the hardest part. That's where like that takes the most time. 
And you got that already. I mean, basically. It's just more making the package into a PDF sewing instruction, making everything into a, a like one place. But I mean, you've re- written things, you have <laughs> the illustrations. Now it's just the pattern that is missing. So it's like, it's that going to be a, such a quick pattern for you when you when you come to it. So I think yeah, I think you definitely should uh, think about it. Yeah, I, I know. I know you're you're absolutely right. And honestly, I think the reason why I don't do it is because I have a um how should i say i'm a, i have a fear about doing pattern development for a pair of pants in woven fabrics because it will be i i feel scared honestly because i know it's going to be everyone it's hard to find a well fitting sewing pattern for pants out of the box so to me i think what i what i'm scared about is having all that work up front to ensure that the uh, the fit and the grading and everything like that is consistent in an in a large size range I, that's honestly my my number one fear uh, so yeah and i totally you know, understand ca- that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because fitting trousers i mean that is i think the most difficult uh, garment to make it fit really well uh, so i think but i mean then it's a great thing that you are working on uh, on the trouser now that uh, that are made in knit fabric because then you kind of ease into it. You, with a knitted fabric, it is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to the fit. Um, so I mean, then you can definitely like try that one out first, and then maybe the next next step is making uh, one in in a woven uh, fabric. Yeah. I, I love that you are encouraging me in this and I think I definitely need to it's they had, you know sometimes they say that it's like the big things happen when you go outside your comfort zone and I honestly think that it there is some truth to that saying because sometimes you're you're a little bit scared because you have a very like familiar way of doing things and you have to like um, move out of that comfort zone which you because you, you said that Malena in the episode where we talked about our book Fit for Knits that when I asked you if you wanted to be a part of that project you said your first reaction was uh it was like scared no <laughs> i didn't want to do it, it was like oh too scared that's some scary big commitment and it's a big project uh but uh yeah the business woman in me said yes yeah that's and i'm very happy that you did because otherwise we wouldn't have that book now because i would never been able to do it myself so i'm very grateful that you went outside the comfort zone and it's also really inspiring for me because I clearly have uh, some issues there, definitely when it comes to pants. And uh, also, you know, you're, um, and we're gonna address that more when we talk about developing a sewing pattern, I think, but you're also, um, how shall I say it? You, you are always, you know, in the hands of how people perceive something. So if you do create a, a sewing pattern and, a lot of people end up having fitting issues, for instance, then it can feel a little bit discouraging, right? Because you're, you're putting something out in the world that people uh, might not be happy with, or for instance. So I think for me, it's also a little bit fear about that because when you're writing a sewing book, um, you w- you're able to control all the variables, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You 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 it's like a presented package but when you are uh, for instance releasing a sewing pattern and maybe people didn't check the fit or didn't measure the pattern properly or perhaps they didn't use the the best suited fabric or maybe they had some other like challenges whatever and that could like end up you know (laughs) not being like a satisfactory result due to many different factors Uh, and to me because I'm a little bit of a control freak in that way. I find it a little bit scary, you know, to leave all that (laughs) open because you have to let go of control uh, at a certain point when you're releasing a sewing pattern. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. And and, uh, of course, when you make a pattern, like you want it to fit everybody, uh, but the harsh reality is like, well, you have to choose like a standardized standardized size range um and yeah and i think most people who sews they are going to be aware of that 
well, if they always need to do this adjustment, well, then they probably are going to have to use that on your pattern as well. So I think, I mean, I hope that most people understand that pattern is a starting point and then you need to probably personalize personalize it according to your needs uh, to the fabric or to your if you need to make some fitting adjustment or something but I totally understand that yeah you don't have 100% control when it comes to the pattern and fit because everyone is different of course but when it comes to sewing instructions then it is more or less the same like you sew it in the same way but the fit can be yeah very very different but then you can also be a little bit smart with what type of silhouette or style or um like how the garment should look like if you make a super fitted trousers then yeah it's gonna be to the millimeter centimeter right for that specific person and then it it is going to be a, more tricky to get a really good fit but if you make it uh, like a little bit more like a chinos for example like a little bit more relaxed fit over the hip um, then you have a little bit more ease and forgiveness um, so it's going to be easier to fit a lot of different types of people so you can mm. be a little bit smart as well there with what kind of trouser you you make, for example. But uh, no, yeah, it's a, it's a constant fear that uh, somebody is going to sew your pattern and not be happy with the fit. Uh, so yeah, I, I know that fear. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to address that, and I think also it's good. I think it's good that we are very uh, honest and transparent about this because it, I think everyone who's running a sewing business or whatever type of business that you're putting products out into the world do deal with this type of fears, and I think it's also healthy in a way because we also need to be like uh, focused to make sure that we have done the best work possible before we release something. But it's also, we have to, as, as you say, Marlena, we have to let go of control at one point or another because otherwise we will never be able to release, release anything if we just let our fears like ruin, uh, run our decision process. So it's usually, and I never had to do that, but uh, I mean, I know I've seen some patent companies that have actually like... Um, done like new versions or changed a little bit about the fit or something like that based on feedback from people that has made the if there had probably has been like consistent feedback ab about a certain fitting issue then I know a couple of uh, examples of this over the years that I've seen that people have actually like made some tweaks uh, which is a, an amazing customer service but it also shows that it it you know it it can happen and it's it's that's probably a good way of addressing it if if it does happen. Yeah, I mean that sounds really like a humble approach to it. Like we have done the best that we can, so we're going to release it. But then if we get feedback that it's like this could be still improved, and uh, I mean from a lot of people, then yeah, that sounds amazing that uh, you actually update it and then you listen to your listen to your customer definitely. Mm. Yeah, uh, but speaking about pattern Malena, because you have released the Malvati now. But I know that you also have some other patterns in the work, right? Yes, I've already started on the next one. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it, uh, because also when you, for example, I have a, I had a te uh, group of testers that sewed the Malvati, and uh, during that time I gave them like two weekends, so it was basically like ten days. Uh, so during that time, I uh, well started on the next one already. <laughs> So I know that you won't say exactly what it is, but uh, could you be give the the viewers or the listeners uh, some hint? Yeah, and I've actually, uh, I've, uh, I've started to be really like open about uh, the developing process because so I think it's a fun fun thing to share as well and to get feedback also during uh, the process. So uh, I don't have any pictures on it on Instagram, but I have... Uh, I added stories uh, when I fitted the first uh, like prototype. So it's um, uh, it's um, it's made for a knitted fabric, and it's gonna have uh, it's uh, like dropped shoulders um, with a cuff, so it's not like a satin sleeve or anything. 
Um, and then at the front, it's uh, like a big pleat, um, and the neckline, it's it's opening up. So, uh, um, how can you say? Like it's more of a dressier uh, top, I would say. Uh, and it's a little bit funny because I actually have I have had this um, pattern in mind for many years, to be honest. Uh, a few years ago, when I uh, I was uh, I was at school, uh, I, I did like a just a, like one year uh, course in uh, cloth three D. It's like a three D program that you can you can like basically sew up your garments and uh, try it on an avatar uh, in the computer, which is really like so cool. Um, and then we had like the end project was gonna be. Um, well, we we could basically decide whatever kind of project we wanted to do. We had to well make a small collection. So then I did uh, a few different type of garments, and I posted everything on Instagram and on Facebook, and asked like uh, my followers, which uh, pattern do you want me to do next? Uh, like uh, basically a survey. Like I wanted to see what uh, what people liked, and I wasn't actually gonna. Um, I did. I wasn't really, really happy about the pictures on this one, uh, but I was like, eh, well, okay, I'll, I'll have it. Um, I'll bring it anyway. Um, and this was the popular, but most popular by far. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. Well, then I'm gonna do this as a next, uh, next pattern. And I think I did this course like, how many years was it? Like three years ago, something like that. So yeah, in. For three years, it has been in the back of my mind, um, and now finally I'm gonna do it. So it's been a really fun process to actually like to start doing it. And um, at the moment, uh, I've sewn uh, samples in my own size and tried it on, and I also um, made samples in size uh, 56 um, that I tried on a dummy here. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with uh, with the fit and with the grading. I'm gonna have both for. Uh, B cup, um, so then it's like no seam at the front, and then also a D cup, and then it's gonna be like a seam from the shoulder seam and well straight across uh, the body, so you will be able to get a really nice uh, shape into it. And uh, right now I am, uh, um, yeah, starting to do the actual PDF pattern. Like I'm working in Illustrator right now, so I always make my pattern in uh, like. A proper pattern making program called uh, Lectra Modaris, um, and when I'm happy with the fit, then I export the pattern to Illustrator, so I can open it up in Illustrator and um, put all the lines in different layers and uh, different colors, and uh, yeah, so it's like easy for you to print out at home. But uh, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm there now in the process. I haven't even thought about the sewing instructions yet. Um, I'm just making the the fun part now, the the pattern actually. <laughs> it, it's so funny because we're such a great pairing that way. Because I love the sewing instructions and I love the technical illustrations, and I find that the sample and development can be a bit overwhelming sometimes. So it's really good that uh, we don't we don't we very much complement each other. I think. Uh, and I should also say, because I've seen the pattern, I thought it was really fascinating because I remember when you did that survey and I think all the other styles were a little bit more simple in that way. There was like maybe a boat neck, boat neck or a simple tee. And while this isn't hard to sew, it definitely looks quite uh, refined because it, as you said, I it looks almost like it could be sewn in a, like a woven rayon fabric because it, it has a very dressy feel and as you say, the, the front pleat and the the cuffs, everything, it looks very elegant in a way that I haven't really seen that many uh, knit sewing patterns uh, before. So it was, it was really interesting because we as pattern developers, we often have these discussions that should we do more basics or should we do aim to do a bit more advanced styles in, in terms of that they do have some more detailing that that could be a way to stand out from you know, everyone else, so to speak. So I, I know that I remember that we had that discussion, right? When you started that. So what, what's your thought process about that now? Yeah, no, definitely to want now to make more advanced, like more fun, fun. So like eye candy, like not, I'm still a very uh, minimalistic design person. Um, so it's not going to be too, too much details. But uh, definitely, and on a few more details compared to just really basic garments. 
Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how how that is uh, received. Um, so, so, but yeah, I definitely want to have more um, details now, and um, I'm already like planning. Uh, it's like okay, this is going to be in uh, Jersey, um, a knitted fabric. But um, what if next um, pattern or next next pattern? Uh, it's going to have the same details uh, with the pleat and the, the neckline, uh, but I make it in a woven garment, a uh, woven fabric, uh, and may, maybe then have like more set in sleeve, a little bit more dressier, um, like tunic or dress even. I don't know. Uh, because with woven, you obviously can have a lot more details, like back yoke, maybe a box pleat in the back, and uh, those kind of things. I wanted to have them already on this one. But it's like, no, it's going to be too tricky to do some of the things if you just have an overlocker. Um, so I'm going to save those details for for a woven version. And I think that's really fun to see how some something can be really nicely translated into a knitted fabric and some details can be much more suitable for a woven va- fabric, but you still could have a few common details. So, um, so yeah. I'm working on this now, but I'm already have like two or three more patterns <laughs> in the back of my mind. Like I'm thinking about those. I'm I'm developing them mentally at the moment. Yeah, that that's also I, that's probably one of the parts that I enjoy the most. You know, trying to to develop. You know, and think about all the little details. And uh, we're going to do uh, another episode in the future about what it's like developing a sewing pattern. We're going to go much deeper into this process, but it's definitely goes a lot of thought into before we even start making the actual pattern because even as you said Marlene on a simple tea there are so many things to consider every little you know shape and and length and width and everything it's it's very much like a fine-tuned work uh, so you have to really make sure that you do your research and your thinking and your testing before you're able to to release a pattern so it definitely and I, I also really enjoy that process, like trying to make the ultimate, sh- you know, shape and design with all the details. And also because we are also, I think if you're like a big brand designer, you are maybe don't as versed in uh, pattern making because it's like a different skill set. and You go to different type of schools, but but we are coming from a sewing perspective as well. So when we do patterns, we always have to think about, okay, this can't look just nice on an illustration. It has to make sense and be understandable. And also, as you say, Marlena, you have to do it on regular home sewing equipment, basically. So you can't like <laughs> go super crazy because you, you definitely want to make it doable for a person who is working from home and having a minimal uh, set up. So that's also one of the challenges I, f- I find when when we're doing patterns. But it's also, I think, a really fun challenge to think about that stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. Because, um, I mean, most of the things you can do uh, with a home sewing machine or overlocker. Uh, b- but I think, that, yeah, as you say, like, the biggest difference between sewing at home and having, like, an industrial sewing line, you have, like, very specific machines out in the like in the industry like you have that one machine to do that specific thing and then another to do that specific thing um so it's a, like a completely different way of sewing uh while here you use the same machine to everything um so um, so yeah you definitely want to have that in mind, like how we are going to develop the uh, all the how we are going to sew the details on a, on a sewing machine. And for me, like, how am I going to describe this in the sewing instructions? That like the, mo- the most like hmm, I need to set it on a good level so I, I will be able to explain it and illustrate it. Yeah, that, that's all. That's trickier than you think. And I, I will. It would be really interesting if you're listening to this or watching on YouTube too. To give us some f- feedback and f- thoughts about that because we do talk about that stuff for instance if it's better to have photos or if it's better to have technical illustrations i know that some of you prefer to have a video so that's also one of the challenges that we are having when we're doing uh, launching something that like what is the best teaching style and also of course uh we are not having a big team here right <laughs> because the, the teams are 
just ourselves <laughs> for the most part. So we are honestly, uh, we don't have always the resources of doing like uh, a photo blog tutorial, doing like really nice technical illustrations and then doing uh, a video tutorial series. So that's one of the things that I, I get uh, asked about. So what I do, for instance, uh, when I'm releasing a pattern is that I, I only do technical illustrations and they are really... I would say they're really, really good if I have to say so myself because I work super hard with those. I try to like, I teach myself basically to, to make them look like Reader's, Reader's Digest, or, you know, those old school sewing books. Uh, uh, but that, that takes me a lot of time to do those. But I, for me, because I, my like niche is teaching, I, I want to ensure that. But then I also usually do like a sew along with photos. But I do get asked a lot about, uh, can you do like a video series as well for sewing patterns? Because I, I do a lot of sewing videos on YouTube. And I do sometimes like a vlog when I sew one of my patterns. But uh, it's it's so much work. And if you're selling maybe say a couple of hundred patterns in, in the best case scenario, it's a lot of work to do like a whole video series that perhaps people that aren't sewing the pattern is uh, perhaps finding us useful because it's so specific. So you always have to like figure out a level that will make sure that the one that's using the pattern understands it, but it also has to make sense from a time and financial perspective. Yeah, definitely. And I want to ask that because um, uh, on my first pattern, I had the photos. Um, so then I didn't do any sew along. Uh, but then, then on my uh, uh, my latest patterns, then I have uh, illustrations. Like, how do you how do you work with uh, sew alongs uh, when you make them? Like, is it basically every step, but you just take photos of them and write the same instructions and make add it on your blog, or how how do you do it? Yes, so it's a little bit of both. I I do like a photo series usually after I've done like a couple of samples it's usually I do it when I am doing one of the photo samples for the release that's usually when I take the pictures so, for, so it's basically like quite late in the process uh, so what I try to do when I do the, the sew along is basically just replacing a lot of the illustration with photos but I also try to make sure that there is a teaching element in it so for instance uh, I'm wearing if you're watching the video I'm wearing the girly top which is one of my sewing patterns and I did a photo, the blog um, tutorial series for that using a striped fabric. So I also focused a lot about how to get stripes to align and how to cut stripes properly to make sure that they align and match and everything like that. So, um, and uh, when I did the AV cardigan so along, I, I used uh, I, I usually have offer a couple of different versions for how to like make certain details like the pockets. So for instance, I I wait, went more in depth with the, like a optional pocket version, for instance, in the sew along. So I tried to make it um, like a little bit more in depth. And I also write even more. I mean, my instructions are quite detailed, but but I write even more uh, on the, the the blog. So it takes quite a lot of time to, to do the series. But yeah. So it's a little bit of both. I definitely try to add value, but also it's just a way of, of like, if you would ever find something a little bit confusing, I think that if you watch the the, the blog, so I think it's, as I said, I honestly, I'm, I'm sure some people have, but this is, I've never had anyone contact me saying that they find my sewing instructions confusing. So I, I, I probably must have it like once or twice maybe, but, but it's not like, a, so I don't really get any, I don't have an, I, I don't have an idea of how I could improve because I don't know which the best way of doing things because I honestly uh, very, no, I, I mean, some, I, I must have, I'm sure some, some person has made me sometimes, but considering that I read really several patterns and, and people haven't contacted me about anything, I don't know which, which area, you know, I should focus on on doing better, but it's also nice that people seem to hopefully, I hope that they, that's the reason why, and not that you are like afraid to email me. But. No, but you have very detailed and so many instructions. I, I, I totally agree there. So I, th I think it's a very clear and easy to follow as well, like what to do. So, so yeah. Um, uh, but have you done any 
a video so along or is it just photos you have used? I I actually I've done for the AV Cardigan I've done uh, a, a, like a vlog uh, and for the girly I've also done a vlog but then it's because it's um, when we're gonna like uh, the thing is that you know as I said you have to think about where you spend your time wisely and because I'm a YouTube content creator uh, one one leg in my business and 90% of the people on YouTube have no idea who I am. They're just looking to help for a specific specific topic. So they don't want to know how to sew the girly top. They want to know how to sew a, a really nice looking t-shirt. So I have to, when I do the, the vlogs, I talk not specific steps about the, the girly top. But I talk about how to sew a really nice neckline, tips for hemming. As I said, you know, I've also done a video of how to cut and sew stripes, for instance. So that's my thinking there. Because again, I cannot, because sewing patterns is such a small leg on my business, like table, so to speak. It's a very short, <laughs> it doesn't even reach to the floor right now. But I'm definitely hoping that it's going to be at least like an even leg. <laughs> but so... I, I, to me, from a financial perspective, it doesn't make sense. No, but I totally understand that. And I also think just how how I myself um, use videos. Uh, when I Google something or search on YouTube, it's I know what I, I know what I'm doing. It's that specific uh, thing that I want help with. So I rather than have like a very short specific task like yes it's the neckline just the neckline I want to see how they do not a 20 minute video or I mean that could be fun of course as well if you are showing the pattern Uh, but for you I totally understand your priorities here that rather make those specific details um, like um, teaching videos instead of so long on a whole garment so yeah I it makes sense Hmm. And I would really be interested to hear, you know, everyone who's listening, watching, how do you feel about this and do you have any points of view? And I also think it's good to talk about. So maybe you you understand why uh, there isn't like that wide reaching content about every particular pattern, because the reality is, is that many of us don't don't sell a lot of sewing patterns. We sell quite few. And I think the the ones that are really successful they maybe feel it's um it's well invested because they will probably sell thousands and thousands of patterns and that can that can motivate that because it's just expensive for me to produce a video or time consuming if i sell 50 or 100 patterns then it's for someone that sells 10,000 of patterns so yeah, I mean we have limited resources both financially and time-wise, so we need to we need to be smart how we how we spend spend them absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, are we going to perhaps round up now because again we talked about for almost fifty minutes, <laughs> but uh, uh, are we definitely going to do more catch up uh, episodes like this because we thought it was really interesting to hopefully you find that too to talk a little bit about both behind the scenes of what's going on so you can follow us and of course as we mentioned in the beginning of this uh, episode that there will be links in the show notes if you are listening on your podcast player to Malianas Malvati out now and of course also to my trousers sewing tutorial series there will be a link as well and do you have any other things that you want to say before we sign off today? No, I think uh, it's uh, so great to be able to catch up with somebody and talk about it. So it's really, uh, no, I really, I really like these episodes. Yeah, same. I love it. So thank you so much for listening and watching and we talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.